why do I say sometimes that I push people, no matter what estate planning they're doing, I push them to have a durable power of attorney? Let's say Bob calls and Bob says, my wife Ava needs a durable power of attorney. She needs me to be able to act on her behalf for uh, business and finance or healthcare decisions or both. Um, you know, the first thing I'm gonna ask Bob is, how is, how's Ava's mental state? How's her capacity? Does she know what she's doing? Can she sign a durable power of attorney? If Bob's answer is no, if, if Ava doesn't have her uh, capacity anymore, uh, they're unfortunately in a, in a pretty bad spot now. Uh, Ava, lacking capacity, can't come in and sign a durable power of attorney that says I authorize, uh, for instance, my husband Bob to act as my power of attorney. My attorney, in fact, is what it's called. Uh, because she doesn't have that capacity. That being the case, her, his option is now to hire an attorney to petition the court for a guardian conservatorship. This means uh, they've got to file a, a document that says, I, Bob, am Ava's husband. Uh, she needs help with her affairs. Um, I would like to nominate myself to be the person who takes care of her uh, for business and for healthcare decisions. Because Bob's not automatically as a spouse, uh, he doesn't really have much special right. You, 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 know, um, you know he can't go uh, for a utility or to the bank or uh, somewhere in, in an official capacity and sign Ava's name. He, he, he can't do that just as a spouse. So he's got to file this petition with the court asking that he be appointed as her guardian conservator. Then he's got to send that petition out to some close relatives. They have the opportunity to say whether they, 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 they get to chime in. They, they can object if they want whether Bob's the right person for the job, spouse or not. Um, uh, close family's got this, uh, got this option to object. If there's an objection, you have to have a hearing, an evidence you're hearing before the court to say, that the husband is the best person to care for the for the wife. Uh, if the court appoints ultimately Bob, um, he gets documents uh, that make this make this official that he has this capacity and this authority, and then he doesn't just get to take care of his wife now, but he, he gets to take care of his wife by showing the documents every time, but also annually. Then he's got to file a report an annual report of the guardian, and an annual report of the conservator saying, here's the business we conducted this year, I conducted this year on her behalf, and here, here here's a, kind of a status of her health over the year and, and uh, different decisions we made. All this was easily avoided if sometime prior to that, Bob and Ava had come to an attorney and said, uh, well, we'd like to talk about durable powers of attorney. They could have each signed a single document pointing one another, maybe an, an oldest child as a backup, and they could have been done. They, they need no court blessing. There's nothing to file, no one to object. Uh, it's, it's easy to take care of your business that way. Uh, it's not meant to be a scary story. I guess maybe it is. Uh, it's to say a, a durable power of attorney, uh, not something flashy that you hear a lot about, but it's an important document. Everyone should have one. Um, I hope this helps you out. I'm Dan Covington. You can always find me at Estate Plan Kansas.